So a lesson today guys on installing and using uh, Drum Pro, um, specifically in the Studio One 4 door. So first thing is, uh, once you've located your downloaded file, um, give them a double click to get the installation process uh, started and go through that normal process you would um, as per installing any program. Um, follow the bouncing ball, allow that to install. Alright, once that's done and you've um, clicked finish, you should hopefully be able to access it directly from your door. Um, so I'm going to fire up Studio One. Usually it puts the VST files for it to access in a VST folder underneath um, Program Files uh, X th uh, 86 or just Program Files. And most doors know to look into that location and then they'll be able to find those files. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just let it go. Hopefully it works straight up for you. Um, just know that sometimes there is a little bit of further configuration. So I'm just going to fire up an empty song, a brand new song. And the things that you need will be in the instruments um, area in Studio One. Um, I've got a number of things installed here. Um, but as I look down the list, I'll have a new one. I'll just expand that out and Drum Pro is right there ready to go. Drag him in to create a new track. And from here, um, in Studio One, I can also hit Caps Lock now, which brings up this little window, which enables me to play the Drum Kit Pro using a standard um, computer keyboard, a QWERTY keyboard. You can see straight away that it's got keys as you would expect in the top left hand side of your keyboard, and now I can use them to actually play notes on the drum kit. And I'm going to take that a little bit further now by showing you how to record some MIDI drum loops for yourself using nothing more than your computer keyboard. So I've pressed caps lock, I have my QWERTY keyboard up ready to go, I have my instrument loaded in ready to go, and you should actually be able to hear the sounds now. And clearly the, um, the letters on here tell you something about what part of the drum kit you're playing, so kick one snare, CL for clap, there's a clap there, and you can see which keys I'm pressing, but really you just have to experiment to work out which um, keys correspond to which drum kit instrument. H for a hi-hat, X I suppose just means something else, that sounds like an egg shaker. Clangy egg shaker. Um, another hi-hat and some other bits and pieces, okay. Um, there is a little mixer down the bottom so you can turn a kick down respect, oh, compared to the snare and the clap or whatever, um, or you can just leave it as it is, it's up to you. You can also pan those things out if you really want to. Um, but I'm not gonna go any further with that in this lesson. Um, so now we're gonna try to um, lay down a track. So if I just get something together here. Yep, that'll do. Um, now I need to set a tempo, so... It's about that speed. So if I have that tempo in mind, and then in Studio One, all I have to do is click on the word tempo at that speed. So click, 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 click. And you'll see that it's adjusting the tempo to suit the speed that I was going at. Jeez, it happens to be very close to the 120 I was on. Um, let's just set it to 115. Um, very important when you record a drum loop in MIDI that it is done to the metronome. Super important. So I need to go into the settings for my metronome here. Um, I want a two bar count in just to get my sort of get myself ready. I like a two bar count in. So a pre count. That's a count before it starts recording. Um, I also have the accented beat or beat one of each bar a little bit louder and of a different sound to my general beat, just so that I can distinguish between them. I might just turn it up just ever so slightly there. Let's see how we go. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Actually, 
believe that will do. Four bars will do nicely. Um, I did get a touch out of time in the middle here, and that'll be good for our demonstration. Don't know if you heard that. Um, so now that I've got my track laid in, um, I want to go into the editor, the MIDI editor for this track. And you can do that two ways in Studio One. You can double click there um, on the audio event itself, or you can use the edit button down the bottom here to enter that. Once you're in that, you can see the different MIDI events that have occurred. So these little blue things are the actual notes themselves. And you can hear I can trigger them straight up there. Um, and you can also see their beat lines, essentially. Um, so this is a bar, bar one, bar two, bar three. Um, and I can see that my first note has landed bang on the first beat, but you can see some of them are a little bit off, yeah? Um, and being human, they, they can be a little bit off. And you have to make a decision about whether your mid piece of MIDI material should sound a little bit human, as in not precise, or do you want it, sound, want it to sound robotic and be exactly bang on the beat every time? Um, as for techno music or dance music, electro, dubstep, whatever, um, probably more precise. Um, orchestral music, if I was writing MIDI for a string section, perhaps I want a little bit of um, play in that. I'm going to assume, for point of argument, that in this case I want it to be spot on. So two ways we can go about it. One is we can listen and we can just pick these up and you can move them around until you're happy with where it is. But there is a function in DAWs called quantize, which will put all of these events onto the nearest line. Um, and that can be a bit hit and miss, depending on how accurate you've been playing it in. The more accurately you've played it in, the closer it's going to be. Um, at the moment, uh, our quantize, in our quantize area, it's set to 1 16th, um, which is an American terminology. Uh, normally, we'd use a crotchet a quaver, a semi-quaver. So it's going to move all of these events to the nearest semi-quaver fraction of a bar. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about here, you can just use trial and error to work it out. Um, obviously, this is a smaller fraction of the bar than, than these ones here. And it kind of depends what sort of notation you've used in your piece of music as well. If I just press Q, you'll see all these move around to the nearest line. You ready? Q. And so they've moved around, but um, you know, I'm a little bit worried looking at it. I'm not sure that's right. Let's just play it and see. Can you hear that's not, it hasn't quite picked up what I was trying to put down there. I'm going to undo that. Let's hear what I've played in. Okay, and that sounds much more even there. Um, the issue was when I played it, I didn't have the metronome quite up loud enough. Let's just have another listen. So boom, ka, boom, boom, ka. So um, I'm thinking that's meant to be on the second beat of the bar. That one's meant to be halfway through, halfway through on the beat, and that one's meant to be on. So you can move it around like that. I think that'll be right. Right, and now we've got that robotic spot-on feel. Um, let's try and demo quantize again here. Uh, if I look at the first few on beat one, that one's on beat two, that one's halfway through beat two, so it's a quaver. Halfway through, that's a quaver. That's on the beat. So since we're using quaver notes here, I'm thinking it's pretty safe to select all of this and quantize it to the nearest eighth note. Let's just try it. See what happens. Right, and it, that's spot on. So quantizing it to eighth has worked here. So just a little bit of trial and error and experience for you playing with that if you want to use the quantize tool. Um, now that is spot on. Um, and the great thing about that is now I can click on my track and if I want to have that going for a few bars, I can press D to duplicate. You can also right click duplicate and I can have that going for as long as I want. Um, I can also, if I want to, change the instrument just from here. Um, we've got this drum hip hop 01 
uh, drum kit at the moment, but Drum Pro comes with a whole selection of drum kits. I can now change that to whatever I like. Um, I'm gonna go for this vintage TR-808, which is a really, really popular um, kit. Let's see how that sounds. Turn the metronome off so you can hear it. There we go. Hmm, doesn't work so well with that one, does it? Gee, that sounds pretty good. I like that one. Okay, so now you can install Drum Pro, you can create your own MIDI events and loops for you to use with your own compositions. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson.